Lesson 78 deals with an idea of particle motion where we can or will discuss position, velocity, and acceleration as a particle moves along the x-axis. And we'll be dealing with different situations when that happens. Um, we can, given one of the functions, we can find the others. If we have position, we can take the derivative to find the velocity. To t uh, if we have velocity, we can take the derivative to find the acceleration function. And we can go back the other way um, by integrating integration integral of acceleration is velocity and then to position. And what will happen is we'll be given uh, different pieces of information. We'll fit that together to, to answer some of these questions. So here it says a particle moves along the x-axis according to the acceleration function a of t equals 3t. The velocity when t is 0 is negative 10 and the position when t or time is 0 is 6. Find the equation that describes the position of the object as a function of time. So that's one thing we want to do and then it says what is the position when t equals 2. So we're starting with acceleration. We're going to work our way to um, position. So here's our acceleration function. We can integrate to get the velocity function. So if we integrate, we get v of t equals 3 halves t squared plus c. But we know some information about velocity. We know when the velocity is 0. So v of 0, um, sorry, when time is 0, velocity will be negative 10. So we can plug in negative 10, uh, put 0 in there, and we get c is equal to negative 10. Um, that happens that our c is this value only when time is 0. If it gives us um, the value at time is another number, we have to plug it in and find what c is equal to. And so our velocity function is 3 halves t squared minus 10. We want to go all the way down to position. It says find the equation that describes the position. So we are going to integrate velocity function. And if we integrate there, so we're integrating this, we get one third out front, t cubed, but we have our three, three halves there, and then minus 10t plus c. Again, we're given some information about the position when we're at time zero. It's six, so we can put zero in um, to our function, and we'll get c is equal to six, and then we can plug that back into our position function here and we have our position function with everything filled in. That was part of what we wanted. It said find the equation that describes the position of an object as a function of time. What's the position when t is 2? Well, we're just going to plug 2 in for t. And we simplify that, which gives us negative 10. So the position on the x-axis after two seconds would be negative 10. Moving on to the next one, particle moves along the x-axis such that the acceleration function is negative 3t. At the position, its position when t is 3, so after three seconds the position is at 20 and the velocity at t equals 1 is 5. What's the position when t equals 4? Also, what time is the particle changing direction? So we have a few things there. Um, we're going to want to start off because uh, the question asks about the position when t is 4, so we're going to work our way uh, to finding the velocity function, and then we will find the position function, and then we can answer some of these other questions. So we start off with our acceleration is negative 3t. We integrate to find the area. So negative 3 halves t squared plus c. In this case, uh, we're told our velocity um, when time equals 1 is 5. So we can plug 5 in for the velocity, put 1 in for t, and we can find c. So we would add um, 1 and a half to both sides, which gives us 6 halves, 6 and a half, sorry. Um, putting it back into the velocity function, we get this. So now that we have the velocity function, we can use um, 
the integral to find the position function. And so we integrate. Here's our position function uh, with the plus c. We need to use the information that we know uh, that when time is 3, the position is 20. So we can put 20 in for our position and 3 in for t. And then we simplify this, ex uh, this expression, with, or we solve for c, really is what we're doing. Um, simplifying here, we have uh, 27, um, negative 27 halves plus um, 39 halves gives us 12 halves, so that's 6, and we get c is equal to 14. So plugging back into our position function, we get our position is negative 1 half t cubed plus 13 halves t. plus 14. So there's our position function. It didn't ask for that, but it did ask for the position when t is 4. So now that we have this information, we can find what the question's asking for. So we can plug in 4, p of 4, simplify. Um, we got 64, so 64 halves, uh, which is negative 32. When you multiply it times um, the negative there. Uh, this will be 26 plus 14. Uh, just continuing to simplify and we get the position when t is 4 is 8. So our position is at 8 when the time is 4. It also says at what time is the particle changing direction? Well when something's changing direction along an x-axis it has to come to a stop and then go the other direction. So when it comes to a stop, the velocity is equal to zero. So that's a key part of this understanding that changing direction means velocity is equal to zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our velocity function right here. We're going to put zero in for the velocity and we want to solve for t. So we can subtract 13 halves from both sides um, and multiply both sides by negative two thirds. Actually, what I did here, I added 3 halves t squared to both sides. Um, now multiply both sides by 2 thirds. And we get t squared equals 13 thirds. We can actually finish here. So um, we take the square root of both sides. And the square root of 13 thirds is your answer, and you could find the decimal form of that. Um, so the square root of 13 over 3, or if you want to rationalize the denominator there, you multiply top and bottom by root 3, so this would be the square root of 39 over 3. And so that would be the answer to that part. And the last example here, the particle moves along the x-axis so that its velocity at time t is given by v of t equals 1 over t, so we know our velocity this time, when time is greater than 0, and its position is 5 when the time is at 2. Find the time when the particle is 10 units to the right of the origin. So we want to find when the particle is at 10, uh, the position being 10. Well here, this in this case, we started off with our velocity function. Well, to get from velocity to position, we integrate. Well, the integral of 1 over t is the natural log of t plus c. It gives us the information that when the position is 5, or yeah, the position is 5 when time is 2. So we can put 5 in for our position and 2 in for time. Um, subtract natural log of 2 from both sides, and we get c. We can plug that back into our position function. And then we wanted to find the time when the particle is 10 units to the right of the origin. So we want to know when our particle is 10. So we put 10 in here for our position, and we solve for t. Um, so we can subtract 5 from both sides, 
which would give us 5. We can add natural log of 2 to both sides. So we have 5 plus the natural log of 2. And then we can change this to exponential form. This is log base e. So we can say e to this power is equal to t. And you can figure out that is, you can plug this into a calculator and you got almost 300 seconds. And so that is particle motion using derivatives and integrals and the given information to find what they're asking for.